the Polish RAF pilots of the Battle of Britain. September 1939 As the German Blitzkrieg storms across Poland, the Polish Air Force leap into action, but they're fighting an impossible battle. The Polish fighters are old, and even slower than the German bombers. To make things worse, the Poles were vastly outnumbered by the Luftwaffe's much more advanced fighters. The speed of the Blitzkrieg caught the Polish, and even the Germans by surprise, and within 48 hours all major air bases had been captured. Fortunately most of the Polish Air Force had already withdrawn to remote airstrips, but these suffered badly from supply issues, and after just two weeks of fighting, the Polish Air Force had flown their last flights. But they'd left an impressive mark on the enemy. During the invasion of Poland, the Luftwaffe had lost 285 aircraft, with a further 279 damaged. 35 days after the Germans invaded, Poland surrenders. The surviving military personnel scatter across Europe, with many of the pilots heading to France, where the Polish Air Force is planning to rebuild. Unfortunately, Poland fell much quicker than the Allies had expected. The Germans played on this by releasing propaganda, stating the Polish Air Force had been destroyed in just 48 hours without ever leaving the ground. As a result, the French are skeptical of the Polish airmen, and the pilots are left on the sidelines with nothing to kill but time. When the Germans invade France, just 10% of the available Polish pilots are deployed, and only one Polish squadron is fully operational. They've been equipped with the Cauldron C714 fighter, an aircraft that was so dreadfully underpowered and outmatched, the French Minister for War has ordered them to be scrapped. But since the French didn't have any other aircraft available, the Polish squadron simply ignored the order and carried on fighting. Once more the Polish are outnumbered and outmatched against the Luftwaffe, but again they perform well in excess of expectations, and before France falls, the Polish squadron destroy 53 Luftwaffe aircraft. With France now occupied by the Nazis, once more the Polish pilots find themselves running from the Germans. This time they make their way to Britain, where they arrive just in time for the Battle of Britain. Given the shortage of experienced pilots, they expected to be flying Spitfires straight into battle. The RAF, however, had other ideas. Like the French, the British also underestimated the Polish pilots. Even the highest levels of the RAF had fallen for the German propaganda about how quickly the Air Force had been destroyed in Poland. In fact, the British were so sceptical, the Polish Prime Minister in exile, General Sikorski, was told that after the war, Poland would be charged for the full cost of maintaining and training the Polish forces in Britain. As a result, and much to their annoyance, the Polish airmen found themselves held up in training centres. Here they were taught the differences between the RAF planes and their previous aircraft. There were, after all, some important differences. For example, RAF planes measured airspeed in miles per hour and not kilometres per hour, fuel in gallons instead of litres, and crucially, pushing the throttle forward would make the aircraft go faster and not slower. The training continued with language and communication lessons. This involved the pilots riding around the airfield on bicycles with a radio and compass. It's completely understandable that this frustrated the Polish enormously. Just a few months earlier they'd been dogfighting with the Luftwaffe. Now they were being forced to ride bicycles around the airfield, with no sign at all of them being allowed back into the air. Despite the reluctance to accept the Polish, the reality was the RAF simply didn't have enough pilots. The pilots training course had already been cut from 6 months to just 2 weeks, and at some points in the Battle of Britain the RAF were losing up to 100 pilots every single week. This left the RAF with little choice but to mobilise the Polish airmen. Some were filed into existing squadrons, whilst four dedicated Polish squadrons were formed. Since the Polish were still unfamiliar with British procedures, initially the squadron's commanding officer and flight commanders would be British Royal Air Force officers, with the rest of the squadron formed of Polish pilots. This often led to issues around discipline. Whilst the RAF pilots were sticklers for the rules, the Poles very quickly earned a reputation for being fearless and borderline reckless when it came to attacking the enemy. But in reality, lack of discipline was nothing to do with this behaviour. There was simply something about the Polish that the British failed to understand. The British were fighting for their country, but the Poles had already lost theirs. They'd seen the Germans marching through their hometowns, their families were living under Nazi occupation, and some had even witnessed the Nazis murdering innocent Polish civilians. The Polish airmen were fighting to maintain their national identity, and they wanted revenge in a way that most British could only imagine. This feeling was captured perfectly in 303 Squadron's first ever victory. 
On the 30th of August 1940, the squadron were carrying out a routine training exercise over Hertfordshire when Flying Officer Ludwig Paskovich spotted a Messerschmitt ME 110. He radioed his British squadron leader, Ronald Kellett, but got no response. Contrary to regulations, Paskovich broke formation and attacked the ME 110. Along with another hurricane, he shot down the German aircraft, claiming 303 Squadron's first ever victory. That evening, squadron leader Kellett gave Paskovich a telling off for breaking formation. He then immediately praised him for shooting down the Messerschmitt and made a call to fighter command to declare the squadron as operational. Very quickly, the Polish earned themselves a fearsome reputation amongst their RAF colleagues. They could often be seen attacking enemy formations head-on, only opening fire at the last second. On one sortie, 303 Squadron Sergeant Stanislaw Karabin spotted a German fighter, but he had a problem. Having engaged so many aircraft already, he'd run out of ammunition. Most RAF pilots at this stage would have called it a day, but not Sergeant Karabin. He chased the fighter down to low level, closed the gap and accelerated over the top. The Luftwaffe pilot was so shocked, he instinctively pushed the control stick forward to avoid a mid-air collision and crashed into the ground. Although being a far cry from conventional RAF tactics, their methods proved to be highly successful, and 303 Squadron would end the Battle of Britain as the highest scoring unit, even though they joined the battle two months after it began. In just 42 days, they recorded 126 destroyed enemy aircraft. The Polish pilots soon became legendary across London. Waiters would refuse to accept money from them in restaurants, barmen provided free drinks, and bus conductors waived their ticket fees. Even when they were shot down, it wasn't uncommon for the pilots to return to their base with a girl on each arm, even though most of the pilots spoke very little English. The Battle of Britain was a huge turning point in the war, and the contribution of the Polish pilots simply can't be emphasised enough. At the lowest point of the Battle of Britain, just 350 fighter pilots were available to the RAF, almost one third of those were Polish. The now legendary Head of Fighter Command, Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh Dowding, had initially been sceptical of the Polish. After the war though, he would say, had it not have been for the magnificent work of the Polish squadrons and their unsurpassed gallantry, I hesitate to say the outcome of the battle would have been the same. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps to get the video pushed out into YouTube so that more people can discover these incredible war stories.